day. It is a beautiful day indeed because joining us here in the studio this morning is Mr. John Barnes, soccer legend from Liverpool. Welcome to the studio, John. Football legend. Footballer. Not soccer. <laughs> Did I say soccer? Did you soccer? call it soccer? My bad. Come on, football. Feeling a bit American after you two, you know what I'm saying? That's true. <laughs> that's true. No, but get this, Carol. Mm. We are breathing the same air. Exhaled. Quick, where's the bottle? John, yes, we got a bottle good, and good sell thing, it. Good on thing COVID's over. <laughs> Let's not be breathing the same air. That's true. That's true. Welcome, welcome Thank you. to one. I love FM. to see you in your Liverpool scarf. I don't know whether you just put it on because of me, because I think Ryan Giggs told me when you said you had a Man United scarf on. You know what? There are so many fans. <laughs> hey, what? Who said that? Who is the? What the? What? Naughty? Yeah. No, no, no. Man City scarf on last week. You are here. Can I just lean over and just? Touch? Are you a Liverpool fan? What is Liverpool happening fan? over here, My guys? My husband is a huge Open Liverpool Open flirting fan. in the okay. studio. He even works for the ba- the bank that sponsors Liverpool. Standard that's Chartered. how my much... Son, my son works for Standard Chartered. You see, that's how much of a fan he is. Yeah. Ah. So you're here for the Singapore Festival of Football, John. Yeah. Welcome back. And tell us what's in store for football fans this the, July. Lots of excitement. Okay. I mean... I think Liverpool came for one day last year, which was an ideal for them or for, for to have some interaction with the fans and some community work. Whereas now they're going to be here for five days. So as well as the football matches, which are going to be great against Roma, Bayern Munich, are going to be here. Mm. Leicester are going to be here. Tottenham are going to be here. They're also going to have some fan engagement and lots of stuff around the city. That's great. So um, yeah, it's going to be a much more all-encompassing trip this a time. A very exciting trip. So we got a Tiger Cup, Tottenham and Roma play on July 26th. We've got a Standard Chartered Singapore Trophy. Liverpool take on Leicester City. Mm. And then Liverpool will take on Bayern Munich for for the Singapore Standard uh, and Audi Singapore Trophy, which of these matches are you looking forward to the most? Um, well, Liverpool, Bayern Munich, of course, historically, they're two great European champions. But uh, playing against another English club would be special. So probably the standard chartered one. Mm. Ah. Okay, you're going to be there? I shall be there, yes. We will I'm be fortunate that I won't be playing. Because uh, uh, uh. when I get to my age and my weight, you don't want to be running around too much. I'm tired watching them running around. So, um, <laughs> So they're gonna, but it's gonna be great because it, you know it's gonna be a lot of intensity, a lot of determination. You know, when I played preseason tours, were to come and have a bit of fun, go to Boogie Street in the old days, which is different to what you kids know of Boogie Street now. Mm. Um, whereas now they're coming in full professional attitude, great games, lots of you know international players playing competitive football. Mm. Actually, that's the thing. You know, when you were playing, times were different. What do you think the sport? How much has it changed since then and now, and in what ways? Well, of course financially changed a lot in terms of the oh, money yes. that's the biggest thing and also the the, the, the the professionalism if that's what you want to call it because as I said when we would come we would also have a bit of fun go out and have a few drinks whereas now they don't do that at all oh. um, so it's much more professional uh, and of course uh, it's much more far-reaching mm. because I knew when I first came to Singapore in the 80s, yes, people from Singapore and this part of the world knew about football, whereas now it's every single day. Mm. You know, so uh, it's, the, it's the reach that football now has for people all over the world to really be invested in it every single day, whereas I suppose back then, maybe you'd see it once or twice, yeah. whereas now it's, it's everywhere. But so, that's the thing, right? Mm. It's uniting the world. Mm. That's the incredible thing. That's why they call it the king of sports. Hey. So what exactly does it take to be a professional footballer now compared to as 20, 30 years ago? What are some of the additional pressures that footballers are prepared to deal with? I don't think it takes anything different than when I played because, of course, A, you need talent. But more importantly, you need to have the right dedication, the right discipline. And I suppose if you if you look at when I played, the players who then became professional footballers had all of those qualities until they became professional footballers. Then, of course, that's when he started to, you know, probably going out and having a bit of fun. But most footballers, when they're young, are completely dedicated. So it takes the same thing, the dedication, the discipline, the determination, the attitude, more, even more so than talent. Yes, you have to be talented, but there's so many talented kids who don't make it because they haven't got those other attributes. So mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, a culmination of a few things. Mm. We are live on Facebook, you guys. So join us there, facebook.com slash 1FM 91.3. Head over to see John Barnes. He is here in the studio, in the flesh, looking also good, smelling also good as well. And you say head over. They're coming over now then. Is that, do you want to come over? When you yeah. say head over, do you mean just phone in or stuff like that? Head yeah, over to Facebook. Facebook. Oh, to Facebook. Yeah. You, see, yeah. you can tell I'm old. <laughs> no, you know. But my kids do all of that with Instagram. I say, listen, I I used to. I don't know if you have phone boxes here where you put a little bit fifty p in the phone box and make phone calls. We it's do. hard to find. Well, that's, we well, still that's, have that's, them. That's, that's my life. You see. So when you talk about Instagram and Facebook and all this modern technology, and I just showed you exactly what I meant when he said head over. You meant head over to Facebook. <laughs> I thought meant you know get on a bus and come over. It's okay. Can it's they come okay. on over? I still use the payphone. They pay can. Yes, they can. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't trust people who use payphones. Oh. Because why are you using a payphone? Bum, bum, you don't want anyone to, no, to know who you're calling. No, my handphone ran out of oh, battery. Okay, That's yeah. <laughs> My wife would not let me use a payphone. Oh. She wants to know who I'm calling. Oh. You can't give me secrets away there. <laughs> Back with more of John Barnes in just a bit. Hang tight. What if-
Hi to everybody on Facebook. Hello. Hello. John oh my Burns goodness. in the flesh yes. in the studio. Oh, a camera as well. Oh, hi. Yeah. Facebook. Uh, yeah, Facebook nice. crew are here, and uh, okay. we got. We want to say hello to Wei Chiang and Alex. Uh, Alex is asking, where are the tickets available? Oh, I have the details for that. All the tickets for all the events, uh, you can head on over to Ticket Tech Singapore from 10 a.m. on the 22nd of May to get hold of your tickets. Hey, fans, you can also sign up for an account on Ticket Tech Singapore for the latest info you will need and for pre-sale access to the matches. You're Woo! not giving away any free tickets you know, on the station, a little giveaway? I will keep them. I will keep them Wha- for myself. Bosses are nodding. Later. Bosses so are nodding. We it's will gonna share. happen. We'll show. <laughs> yeah, make sure you stay it's tuned. It's a good thing I'm here because we're not going to tell you that. <laughs> but I forced them to do it. There you go. Thank you, good you man. Liverpool fans. Good Thank you, man. John. I know Liverpool fans are going to turn up looking for them. I can tell you, you know what they're yeah, like. Yeah, they are. Lots of people very, very excited. We, we had a, our producer Joel, who's over here. His cousin actually drove over last night to his house to hand him over to hand over like Liverpool merch to get you to sign it. Is that okay? Absolutely. How far? <laughs> yeah. uh, the drive, how far was the drive? Thirty minutes. That's a long way. It is for a long way here in Singapore. And, you know, and, and it's all in the way you actually say it. Because if you went, they drove over last night. People would have thought. He, but when you go, they drove over. It sounded like they came from a long way, so they, they deserve it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they live next to each other. You just hey, gave them to them. Yeah. So, John, what would you say is the highlight of your career? My whole career. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I never look at any because what we do. Once again, to go back to modern technology, my kids are always on Instagram to mm. show their best selves. Mm. But that's only. And when people look at that. They think that that's what their life is, but yeah. that's only a very small part of their life. The other part of their life, they're like, you know, depressed or angry or happy or whatever, just normal. So I don't look at highlights. I look at my whole career for the ten years at Liverpool, well said, yeah. twenty years played, and that's that, that's that's the highlight. Mm. The rough and the smooth. That's what life is. Wise Important. words and truth there, huh? Yeah, you gotta look. I at sound it like as an old whole. person, don't I? My kids no, say that to a me little all the bit. time. <laughs> <laughs> and also, can we ask? You know, like, uh, hmm. Do you still hang out with your Liverpool teammates? Are there any that you're close to? Um, what do you guys well, get up to? Well, of course, at our age now, we, we, we go and, you know, pick, well, we don't even pick the kids up from school. They've left school. <laughs> we pick the grandkids up from school. So, yeah, we don't, we don't hang out like we used to. Uh, but my friends were always my friends who I grew up with because footballers are my acquaintances because you play for different clubs and you see them. So, But fortunately at Liverpool, we still have a, a, a strong Liverpool connection of people still living in the area, Ian Rush, Ian Mulby. So we still live in the area. So we see each other now and again, and, and, and the matches particularly, because we all do you know, work for Liverpool. Um, but in terms of real friends, they've just been my friends ever since I was young. They're the ones I hang out with. This is nice. You know, you play so passionately in the sport that you all love and the friendship mm. carries on till today. That's fantastic. Well, the ones that you like. <laughs> Because, well, of course, the players are played with them. No names mentioned. Because while we're good professional, good teammates, and we had each other's back when we played football, we may not get on. But that's life anyway, isn't it? That's true. That's true. Now, words in motion. Reached number one in the charts back then. Spent 18 weeks in the UK Top 75. You were only played a, fat f- a flat fee of just uh, 200 pounds. Received no royalties. Did do you, you do? You did the maths because I said we did 5,000 pounds between the 25 of us. So I think that that's about right. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but that's about right. I gotta say, you've got an amazing voice. Well, We're I'm a right? rapper, not a singer. No, but even then, right? <laughs> yeah. Jumping so back live on air. We'll talk about it on air as well. Yeah. I thought we were on air. <laughs> Sounds of Roxette and fading like a flower on <laughs> one of them, 91.3. What's going on over there, John? Patting your tummy? When you get to my age, you've got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Is hungry? there anything you're looking forward to eating here in Singapore? Because you've been to Singapore quite a few times. Oh, I love, do you I love, enjoy I'm, our food? Oh, absolutely. I love Chinese food. Ah. love it. I, went to, I was at the, um, where did I go last night? A friend of mine. I was uh, not disappointed, but we went to the polo club. Come on, I'm off come here to eat food in the polo club I wanted to go down to <laughs> but I went to a very nice restaurant I don't know if it's called Hinky but someone took me to a nice restaurant chicken rice yeah mm. yeah we just sit outside and eat that's, that's yeah so you can tell I like, that's why I'm patting my tummy yeah you ask me about food because you can tell I like food well um, you're in the right it, place for food yeah and of course you know that's our, one of our national dishes in England is Chinese food. Yeah, you know? really. Of yes, course. of course. In Chinese and Indian, you know, we don't have our own food. You know, Chinese chicken tikka was actually invented in the UK. It's Scotland, chicken yeah. tikka masala. Exactly. So. Yeah. yeah, it's not. Yeah. In I, Indian I mean, I went to India and asked for chicken tikka masala, and never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> True that. So we're chatting with football legend John Barnes here in the ninety-one point three studio here for the Singapore Festival of Football in July, and uh, we will tell you how you can grab your tickets, all the matches that are lined up for you. In fact, there are open training sessions that people. can and head over to catch as well. Yeah, there's going to open training sessions, but also interaction um, with with fans and, and communities because mm-hmm. they're here for the f- a five day trip. Whereas last year was just one day, so they couldn't do much. So now they're going to be much more interactive with the fans. It's not been finalized yet because obviously they're just 
agreed to come. So once the the details of what they're going to be doing, but there's going to be lots of interaction going on. For okay, the and special Ooh. like picture, photo moments, merchandise, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. So you've been a manager yourself for mm-hmm. a few teams, a few times. And what's it like being in that job? Do you want to try and be a high level coach? You want to be a coach where you can get a job, <laughs> and keep a job. You can see what's happening in modern football where they sack coaches now every yes. every three or four months. Yeah. So it's a very difficult situation because in football, that's the best thing about football. You know, in other sports, in other sports, a lot of the fans beat rugby, cricket. Mm-hmm. A lot of the other fans probably feel that the manager knows more than you. Mm. But in football, they don't. Because in football, all the, ma- all, the, all, the, all the fans know more than the managers, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Which is so true. Unfortunately, unfortunately, when you have people who say, and I will say to the fans, you know, you go and watch a rugby match, and the, the rugby fans don't think they know more than the coach, but that is how powerful football is and the feeling that it gives everybody that they're all experts. So, mm. of course, it's made it much more difficult for managers now because unless you win, Somebody else could have done it better. Yeah. So it's 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 a difficult thing. Yeah. Um, everyone's so, so invested in the, the game. It yeah. is right. Yeah. I do love that kind of passion. But you're right. This is a huge challenge. You know, for football clubs today. Right. Well, to to to, to remain faithful, to remain loyal, to believe in the managers. You know, we trusted in Jurgen. Jurgen. So, but there are very few managers who have that power. Look at Chelsea. You know, you have one of the greatest managers who got sacked after a few months. You know, Tuchel, Conte, yeah. because you know the fans say that you're doing something wrong. So, Which manager would you play under if you had? I'd love to play under Jurgen. Yeah. Absolutely, mm. because of his passion. Um, I played on the Bill Shank. Oh, no, I felt I played on the Bill Shank, the Liverpool's manager, because what Kenny Dalglish did, who was my first manager at Liverpool, was the same thing that Bob Paisley, that Joe Fagan did. They continued the Liverpool legacy that Bill mm. Shankly started. Mm. So when I went to Liverpool, although Bill Shankly left probably 25 years before me, I felt I played on the Bill Shank because they had that tradition. One more question. Uh, what change would you ever make to the rules of the structure of modern football? given all your years of experience (laughs) in the game. I would allow the referees a little bit more um, autonomy in terms of using their common sense. Because (laughs) now, no, it's true, because referees are now being told that you have to do this if this happens. And football is a difficult game to to referee because, you know, both of the problem, the difference between football and other sports, particularly other sports like rugby American football, but, you know, whereby you play with your hand, whereby you have control of the ball. So therefore, mm-hmm. if you're going to get the ball off me in basketball, mm-hmm, you, you mm-hmm. have to foul me because I've got it. In football, the ball's always free. Yep. Because when the ball's on the ground and you pass it or you kick it, whose ball is it? Because it's free for everybody. Mm-hmm. So therefore, there's a, lot more, there's a lot more mistakes to be made in terms of is the free kick for you or me. If we're mm-hmm. running together and you're putting my shirt, I'm putting your shirt, whose free kick is it? Sure. But the referees would then use your common sense or you know, be a little bit more understanding, whereas now the laws are too, too strict. Yeah. Okay, super final last question. Yes. Will England ever win the World Cup again? Oh, I'm glad you said again. Because, you know, in 66, before you, well I before you were born. Yeah, exactly. before, before, before you were thought of. Yeah. Um, that's when we wanted. You, you, did you not know we won it in 66? No, I know it. All right, okay. 1966. I wrote it down for her. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you don't say you like that. It, it sounds like it's a long way away. So a what do you think? Mm. We will. We Listen, it's a very difficult thing to do, you know, because not many cl- teams have won the World Cup mm. of all the countries in the world. And what you can ask England to do or any team who's in the top 10 in the world is to maximize their potential, which means that you should be getting to the semi-final and the final. And with a bit of luck, you can win. Mm. But to expect England to win when they're not the number one team in the world, they're not the number two team in the world. So if you're in the top 10 in the world or the top six, you should get to the semi-final and the final, which is what England do. So with a bit of luck, we can, because you need a bit of luck. Um, So I think we will. Mm. Um, I can't say when. <laughs> I was just going to say, just a matter of so when. Even, even if it's not going to be in our lifetime, I can still say we have an opportunity in the future. Okay, 2066, here we come. All hey. right. <laughs> will, I still, I'm, will I still be around there? Um, <laughs> not, mm, yeah. well, Life expectancy is increasing, so yeah. there is a chance. Not mine. <laughs> John, thank you so much for joining us here in the studio, uh, telling us all about the Singapore Festival of Football, sharing with us a bit about your life. Where thank can you. people find tickets and where can they see you? Uh, you first. Where can, where they, can find they see you? me? Yes. 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 Well, they can, uh, do you have a well, well Boogie Street, two thirty in the morning in the old days. <laughs> Has it changed? Because that's where you could see me in the nineteen eighties. Okay. Are you going to be at Whereas each now of you could the probably little... see me in McDonald's or KFC because you can tell I like that. Uh, uh, I'll be at all the games. Yeah, all um, the games. So the ga- well, there's going to be two games. So we will be in the in the in the in the, in the national stadium. Mm. So make sure on the on the on the thirtieth, I think. Yeah. On the thirtieth. Yep, that's right. And then we're there the against 26th. the second. I didn't know it was a quiz. I thought you know. You thought you should have had that information. With no, we just want to know where you are. You, you yeah. have all the dates right. We've got July twenty sixth, August second, and also uh, the thirtieth of uh, July as well. Tickets for all the events for Singapore Festival of Football. It's driven by CDG Zig. It's going to go on general sale by Ticket Tech Singapore from ten a.m. on twenty second May. Make sure you sign up for an account so that you can get the latest info. Couple as of well free as ones as well. Couple of free tickets. Hey. Ooh. And pre 
sell access. So you heard it from the man himself. There might even be free th- tickets. All right. Thank you, John Barnes. Enjoy your time here in Singapore. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We ready? The Bright Side with